Well, let's jump right in. About, uh, oh, many years ago, I was an avid, avid deer hunter. This time of year reminds me, I'm looking outside and seeing, uh, just starting to look a little like fall. A lot of leaves are dropping off the walnut trees. And uh, back in, in those days, it's been a number of years ago, um, bow hunting season, archery season for deer here in Missouri started on October 1st and ran through the end of the year. So you had a three month period to hunt deer. And uh, they've changed that since, I believe it started on September 15th and runs into January, mid-January now. But anyway, um, used to really be an avid uh, deer hunter and spent a lot of time in the woods. And there was a lot of preparation that took place. And I can remember, um, well, deer are very keen animals. They, they have a heightened sense of smell. And uh, with, a, with a firearm season, with a, with a rifle in your hand, um, it was less critical because of the distance you could be away from the deer. But with archery, you had to get up really close. And so um, it was very critical that you watched which way the wind was blowing, uh, where you anticipated the deer being in relationship to the wind. Um, it was very critical that you did things like um, didn't gas up your car and and uh, step out on the pavement where people had uh, dropped their cigarettes and, and drip gasoline and have that on your feet when you go into your stand. Um, very um, tedious preparation as far as clothing and what scent might be on there. And so, so to wash clothing and baking soda and to, and to shower and wash your hair good with baking soda. Yes, even then I had some hair and, and uh, even a little bit of hair uh, needed to be washed with baking soda to get rid of any scent. Um, it was very critical when you went deer hunting. And, and I was such an avid deer hunter that we lived on, on 130 acres. And so I would even plant trees uh, trying to give the deer cover in certain areas and I would get uh, maybe from the conservation department get a, a bunch of trees and plant them and and um, funny thing is I was doing it for the deer trying to provide cover trying to provide that kind of thing and so as these trees I would plant a row of uh, two or three rows of pine trees to create a windbreak in the winter and, and have a place for them to bed down and and about two years later as the trees got up a few feet tall um, in the fall, the bucks would come along and rub their antlers and tear the trees all up and break them off. And, and I got so frustrated uh, trying to help the deer and them uh, just thwarting every effort. It was really frustrating. But uh, then I learned that uh, you could tie things onto the trees to, to deter the deer. And one of the things you tied on there, you could, you could put a bar of soap, uh, soap, the smell of soap seemed to keep them away. You could put uh, some kind of bone meal or blood meal you could buy and put on there, but that attracted some other kinds of animals. Also human hair was another thing. They said you could go out and, and uh, you could go to a barber shop or a, a salon and just ask for all the clippings they sweep up in a day or whatever, and you could put those in little uh, net, nylon net sacks and, and tie them onto the trees, and that would deter the trees because human hair held scent uh, so greatly. And so anyway, those were good old days. I don't do that anymore. I don't have time nor the desire. I still love to, to see wildlife and watch the deer, but no, no desire to go uh, hunt them anymore. Um, but anyway, yesterday's sermon was great. Um, getting back to that, that, that message, that part of the message yesterday about uh, Mary, taking the costly oil and, and washing Jesus' feet. That was, that was pretty, um, pretty impactful for me as Josh uh, really gave us that visual of, uh, of Jesus carrying that uh, scent with him through those last uh, events of his, of his life here on earth, even to his um, crucifixion and that scent still permeating uh, all the other scents. Uh, there at the at the crucifixion at the cross um, as she anointed him earlier in the week for for burial uh, that was pretty impactful but so the focus was certainly on Jesus where it needs to be and uh, I love that and so nothing nothing at all to to uh, detract or add 
to what Josh was saying and how powerful that was. But my mind kept, my mind kept going a different direction after that. And, and, and I hope these messages um, and cause you as well to ponder and to, and to uh, look at other things. So my mind went to Mary as she poured this, poured this out on. The, the cultural implications of Mary even being there in that proximity to Jesus, even being able to do that, the things she did, the, the cultural implications are huge and there's a, there's a great uh, message there, a great uh, sermon there, if you will, um, that I'm not gonna go into at all today. But the fact is that Mary washed his feet with her hair. I didn't really wanna talk about deer hunting, but I wanted you to get the picture of what human hair does and how it holds scent. When Mary lavished her worship on Jesus, it changed her aura. Okay, I looked up aura in the dictionary. And it's a distinctive atmosphere surrounding a given source. B, it's a subtle sensory stimulus, an aroma. Mary was changed that day to all those who were around her. There was no denying she had been with Jesus when they, were, when they smelled what Jesus smelled like and they smelled Mary. There was no... There was no mistaking that smell. There was no um, wandering. Remember when Peter uh, denied Jesus and they, they accused him and said, weren't you with Jesus? No, not me. Three times, correct? Mary couldn't have had the same denial. She was all in. She spent all she had on him. And as Josh said, it's always worth it. It's always worth it. There's no... She would have given more. She'd have had five pounds. She would have poured five pounds on him. I'm confident. Um, she did all that she could. Her greatest, her greatest thing of value. Um, so I, so I, I think back to Moses as he went up um, in Exodus to get the tablets, and um, when he came back down, remember his face shone. Um, so much so that, that his people feared and he had to veil himself after he'd been with the Lord. And I think there's a lesson here for us. I think there's an encouragement. I think there's uh, a strong encouragement here. We're not Moses. We're not Mary. But shouldn't there be a change in us when we spend time with Jesus? In our prayer time, shouldn't we like Moses, come away differently, come away changed. Our aura should be changed. Like Mary, when we lavish our worship, when we lavish our, pray, lavish our praise on the Lord, shouldn't our aura be changed? Shouldn't our perception to the world be different? Shouldn't it be undeniable that we've been with the Lord? I'm not say, saying we're going to have a, a, a scent like Mary did or, or shine like Moses did, but to a small degree, shouldn't we be changed? No. The point is not that we're different from Moses or Mary and we're not in face to face with the Lord. The point is that the Lord is, is the same. God is the same. He's the same as as the God that Moses was before, he was the same as Mary's presence, uh, as when Mary was before him washing his feet. The same God, the same Lord, is who we interact with. And so shouldn't we be changed? Shouldn't there be some residue of him on us? I want to encourage you as you worship and as you give your own, as you give your your whole being, um, you know, we can't, we don't have anything worth enough. We have nothing valuable enough to show our gratitude and show our love. And so ourselves is, is the ultimate. And so when you give yourself to him, give yourself to him 
fully in prayer. Give yourself to him fully in worship. Engage. At church, we're trying to eliminate distractions in a service, but much of that lies on us, the congregants. We need to get the distractions out of our lives. We need to not be distracted by those things that used to distract us. We need to be so focused on the Lord that those things don't distract. Nothing's going to distract us because we're there to worship him and worship him with our whole being. And so I want to encourage you in, in these days, you know, we talk about being a light in the world. We talk about uh, the world seeking us out as they look for hope as the days get darker. And, and I just want to remind you that we talked about the moon a few weeks ago. The moon, when it's apart from the direct um, path to the sun, it's just a globe of darkness. It has no light. It has no light of its own. It's only when it gets in proximity uh, with, the, with the sun that it, it takes on this new aura. And, and that's what we need. I just, I just pray that this imagery uh, will inspire you uh, to want to be in God's presence, to want to pour out yourself uh, for him because you love him and because you adore him and you will be changed. It's not, it's, it's not gonna be an option. And there will be no denying that you've been in his presence. And that may scare you if someone accuses you, as with Peter. Um, but God is enough. He is enough. Um, I've, I've written notes and I've strayed, and so uh, forgive me. Um, I'm, I'm horrible at, uh, of that. But uh, I think I've said enough. I like to keep these fairly brief. I think I've said enough to start your week with. Um, seek God, spend time with him. Don't just spend minutes with him. Uh, give yourself to that time fully. Give yourself to worship fully. Don't just participate in worship. Give yourself fully uh, to worshiping him. And uh, there will be a residue on you uh, that, the world will, that the world will see. And uh, that's how we're going to that's how we're gonna change a world. That's how we're gonna change a community, by being light, by being his presence, uh, by showing his presence and showing his love. So, so God bless you all, love you, and I and, uh, and, uh, want you to have a great week this week as you go forward and, and uh, just press in, press in harder. So God bless you, let me pray for you. Father, uh, you see the writing on the screen, you see the, the prayer requests, Lord, anything that's coming, I just pray, Lord, that you would that you would be with these people, Lord, that are watching today, those who will watch in the, in the future, Lord. I just pray that uh, you will captivate us, Lord, captivate our hearts. Um, give us that sense of, of uh, desire to, to, fully, to fully give ourselves to you, Lord. It's a, it's a world that everybody wants a piece of us. Everybody wants a part of us. Everybody wants to pull us. We're pulled in so many directions, Lord. You know, you know the struggles. Every age has had their own struggles. Every, every generation has had their own unique struggles in one way, and yet certainly not unique at all um, in the overall scheme of things, Lord. So we, have not, we are not places where other men haven't fought and struggled and other women haven't um, struggled to be uh, engaged with you, Lord. I just pray that you'd draw us. We know the time is short, Lord. Draw us. Give us that hunger, Lord, and be glorified in our worship in our personal worship, Lord, in our worship at Grace Calvary Chapel, Lord, I just pray that you would, you would, uh, you would just uh, bring this new sense of nearness, Lord, that, that you're there. When we come to bow at your feet, when we come to worship at your throne, Lord, I pray that it would be as if you were sitting there. I pray that it would be that close, Lord, and I just, I just pray that the fragrance would be all over us. So, Lord, go with us this week. Um, strengthen us, Lord. Encourage those who are who are hurting, those who are down. Heal those who have broken hearts and, and broken bodies, Lord, and, and uh, bring glory to your name through it all, Lord. All for your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. Have a great day.